Picture me rolling. Tip of my shelf. Niggas look. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Prime Gang. Today, we're going to do the hot seat questions with my mom. Introduce yourself. Hey, I'm China. How you guys doing? Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, so I didn't want to do this. First of all, my best friend said no. But my cousin just did it for her channel, which is the Wack Pack family. And she Follow did it them. with her mom. And we're going to do it with my mom. My mom's open to any questions. Like, share, and subscribe, baby. My mom's open to any questions, so it just depends on what the questions are that she's willing to answer. If she doesn't feel comfortable, we will move on to the next question. So, first question. Who was your first love of your life? The first love of my like, life was my first husband for 27 years. Okay, okay. No name, but yes. 27-year husband. I was 15 years old, yes. 27 years, married legally. So, yeah. What was the worst decision that you made that you feel like if you could have went back into the past to change it, what would it have been? Um, not made excuses when I got pregnant at 17 and stopped school and continue my education. I would have been a nurse and also a lifeguard because I was already at the transition of doing that, but I couldn't finish because I got pregnant. Okay, okay. So now the next question I'm going to ask you is, out of the three children you have, uh -huh. Name three bad things that we did as kids and name three good things that we have done like to fix if we have fixed those errors or stuff we have done now. Okay, well, you being my firstborn who made me a mother at 17, um, you really, really didn't do too much bad stuff. You just did a lot of sneaky shit and then act like, like you didn't do nothing, but it's okay. I let it slack and use my firstborn. So, you know, I really didn't know how to discipline because I never really got disciplined because I was a good child to my parents. So, but um, my second, which was my daughter and my third, my other son, they wanted to smoke, you know, that bonga, hello. And I was not the type of mother to have them smoke in my house because they were very young when they started. Um, I was down for a lot of shit with my kids and I was down to be like the mom, the cool mom. Um, one thing parents don't do, you're not a friend, you're a parent. And where I fucked up at was, I told my kids, I'm your friend before I'm your mother and that's completely 100,000% wrong. You're the mother, ain't no friendship, that's it. Um, but anyway, but my kids, my two youngest, they like to smoke weed at an early age. Um, my daughter came out at an early age that she liked it, you know, both men and women. It didn't bother me at all because we had that in the family at all. So, and we had a lot of issues growing up, my kids, because they felt that I was a fucked up mother because I didn't let them do that. So we had a lot of problems, fussing, fighting, et cetera, et cetera. But them being grown ups now, uh, my daughter made me a grandmother. She has a daughter, which I already knew she was going to have a daughter because it's a saying that us Puerto Ricans say, you have a daughter is going to teach you what you did to your mother. You're going to learn it with your own child. So I knew she was going to have a daughter. And my youngest, um, he's doing his thing now. You know, he got a job. He's moving forward. He's leaving all this gang life, both bullshit ass, fake friends. You come back, they still in the same corner doing the same shit. No job, no money, no nothing. Um, my kids learn from their struggles. Um, because I'll keep it a hundred. I threw my kids, my two youngest, out 13, 14 years old in the street. They had to learn. But I'm a hustler and I taught my kids a lot of shit. You learn the street life and you learn how to be how you call it, uh, the house life. You know, how to be a husband, a wife, uh, cook, clean. You don't need a man or a woman to teach you how to cook and clean and all that. You do that on your own. At first, they didn't understand because they were young and they had all these other people running in and out of their ears, you know telling them otherwise, but as they grew older, and when I say older, I'm going to say past 20. It took a long time, but me and my kids, you know, they apologize. I apologize to my kids also because us parents, we do a lot of shit that we don't remember or we let it slide or throw it under the rug, whatever you want to say. But I apologize also to my kids as a mom. And now, thank God that now my kids is all going to be, all three of them almost 30. And I'm going to be almost 50. So my kids are almost 30, all three of them. And 
right now they doing good. They all got jobs. They they moving forward with their career. They trying to do what they got to do. They apologize to me. I apologize to them, as it should be. Mother, father, whatever. Apologize and amend because you're here today. Tomorrow you're not. And once they close that casket, it doesn't matter if you cry, fuss, say I'm sorry. They're not gonna hear you. It's too late. You know. So do it while they still alive. You know, appreciate your parents, appreciate your kids. Because sometimes, like, parents, to be honestly, because, like you said, we're 100 on this. Us as parents, sometimes we just, like, whatever. They don't even know what the fuck they told me. They didn't go through what we went through. I can't say that because in my life, I had a wonderful childhood. My parents gave me everything. I didn't have a stepmother or a stepfather. You know, fortunately, my kids had that. Stepdad, which was my husband for 27 years, who took care of of my kids. He don't have no kids on his own. He took care of my three kids and took care of me. You understand? So, like I said, you know, it's all, you live and you learn, but the best thing to do is amend. Amend your relationship with your kids. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care if your kid is a junkie, a prostitute. It don't matter. I don't care if your mother's a crackhead, a, a hoe, or, or whatever. Put that shit aside and build that relationship because trust me, when they close that casket, it's a whole different ballgame. Next question. Sorry, I took long, but go ahead. I have to throw this. <laughs> um, the next question. Name two things you loved about both of your parents. Uh, two things I loved about my parents was that they married for 32 years and they definitely, definitely showed me how to be a wife because they showed me what it was to death do you part for better or worse. And definitely my mom and my dad was married for 32 years. I didn't have no stepdad. I didn't have no stepmom. Um, maybe a little rocky relationship between my mom and my dad. But it doesn't matter because love conquered all that. And they still together. So my mom still with my dad until my dad passed away. Um, when my dad passed away, my mom still single. You know, maybe a little flirty here, there, there, whatever. But <laughs> my mom's still single. And she showed me how it is to be a mom, a mother, a grandmother, how to be loyal. Definitely to be loyal, whether it's family, friends, whatever. If you don't get the same, uh, how you call it? If you don't get the same response from anybody else, that's fine. Keep it pushing, brush it off your shoulder. It is what it is. But you stay loyal to yourself. That's um. it. My next question is, what's, what's one thing you regret other than having your kids, like, at a young age? What is it that you regret that you did that maybe you feel like you couldn't change now, but you could have if you could at that time when you was young? Well, first of all, I don't regret none of my kids. I'm not saying the kids part. I'm no, saying no, I know. I'm just saying I don't regret none of my kids. I had you at 17. I was a very, very young mom. I don't regret anything. Um, You actually taught me how to be a woman at an early age. Um, and the reason I say that was because my mom moved away from where we live at now. I've been living here 41 years. Uh, my mom gave me this apartment when I had my son. I was 17. And she told me, you have a son. Here's the apartment. You do you. That's what made me become a mother. I had no choice but to learn and live and how to hustle, how to make money, how to make sure that we ate and we got our bills paid. Because at that age, you don't have nobody telling you, oh, yo, you got to make this money. Oh, you got to pay your rent, your bills, especially when your parents are not there. So you have to learn. Um, the only thing different I say I would have I done, and I said it in the beginning of the interview, whatever you want to call this, was that even though I was pregnant at an early age, I definitely would have not made no excuses and I would have finished because I dropped out of high school at 12th grade. I was already almost done. So, you know, with the complaining of, oh, I'm pregnant, I'm throwing up, I don't feel good, I'm no shit, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, and da, da, da. that's all bullshit, that's all excuses. Because now I'm almost 50, and I know a lot, don't get me wrong, I didn't graduate high school, college, but I know a lot, I had to learn on my own. Um, I don't know what else I should ask you. Ask me whatever. Okay. We, are we going to be transparent? Mm -hmm. What made you fall in love with my dad? And what was the final breakthrough for you to end? Well, actually, I'm going to say I loved him. I was not in love with him. I loved him. That was my first boyfriend. Like, me being, I'm not going to say mature because I was only 17. But knowing 
more than anything. Because, you know, at 13, 14, you got a little boyfriend, you got no crushes, and you're like, mm -hmm. but your dad, I was not in love with him. I loved him because I thought I loved him. He was cool. And then I kept hearing all these females talk about how good he was in bed and how this and that in the third. So I said, fuck it, let me try it. But he was my best friend. That was the problem. You don't fuck that up. You don't fuck with your best friend. Because that fucks up the whole entire relationship. I don't give a fuck who says that's a true, that's a lie. That fucks up your friendship. If you best friend somebody and you got a crush, keep your mouth shut, don't say shit. Keep it pushing and look for somebody else because that definitely messes up your friendship. You know, like, I I wouldn't go back to it. I don't regret you. I wouldn't go back to it. He got too many kids. I'm he a piece of shit. <laughs> But, you know, his name is Chantez. He's a piece of shit. No, we not giving out so, government. <laughs> I did. I just did. But anyway, like I said, whatever. I'm gonna keep, we keeping it 100, so we all right. Okay. <laughs> but but I, don't regret, I, don't, I don't regret my kids. Put it like that. I don't regret my kids. I don't care. It's a life lesson learned. That's it. What's next? Um, the, the last question. <laughs> you see, don't ask me to be real. I'm 100% real. What's I'm real what bitch. accomplishment that each kid that you had gave you and you feel very proud of um or one, accom more, one accomplishment okay one, one accomplishment that all my kids did that i'm happy was amend the relationship with me before i die or whatever because you you know tomorrow i promise so i know that once they close that casket on me my kids don't got no worries like, oh, damn, I fucked up. I was mad with my mom. They closed the casket. I fucked up. Damn, I did this to my mom. I did that. I did shit, too, to my kids that I don't remember. Fuck it. That's part of being fucking old. The fuck? I'm old. I don't remember half of the shit. Sometimes they tell me stories. I don't remember, but fuck it. It is what it is. That's what they say. It is what it is. What the fuck? It is. But I'm just very proud that my kids all learned how to be dependent. They don't depend on nobody for shit. For my boys, you know, whether you're gay, you're not gay, you're straight, you're bi, you're sci, I don't give a fuck what you call it. My kids know how to cook, clean, wash, and they don't depend on nobody. My kids are very dependent. They like their money, they pay bills, they're very responsible. Same thing for my daughter. She has a daughter of her own now. So now she knows a little bit more and she appreciates me more. Because now she knows that whatever I did, whatever I had said for her before, you know, when I was younger, or I said things to her, now she knows because she has a, like I said, she has a daughter. So now, you know, it's different when you have a daughter. You can't leave her around with other people. You know, gotta be careful. You got all these sick people doing shit, whatever. But like I said, I'm just very proud that my kids are very dependent. Again, this is like the main thing for me. Once they close my casket, I know my kids are good, and I'm not going to die worthy about, oh, my kids don't know how to cook, clean, or wash. They don't know how to make money. They're depending on other people, people abusing them. I don't have to worry about them, my kids. My kids are very, very well trained. They're good. Okay, everybody, that's all the questions I have for today. Two cents, bitches. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, y'all. We out. I'm dead as fuck. Mm. Nah. Picture me rolling. Tip of my shelf. Niggas look